Hey, Chris with RC Worst here, and today we're taking a look at a jet pump that was returned by a customer. He mentioned that there may be something going on with this jet pump. So we've got it out on the workbench today. We're gonna hook this thing up, do some troubleshooting and testing, determine what's wrong with it. And in the process, I figured I would just show you kind of some of the uh, some of the things to look for in a in a properly functioning jet pump system. Um, so basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to hook this thing up. We've got the inlet plumbed up. We've got the discharge, which it's a little bit loose because we've still got to prime the pump. Um, so we're going to hook this up plumbing wise, and then we're going to hook this up electrically. We're going to run the pump a little bit and see if we can't determine what's going wrong with this thing. So uh, first thing I'll mention is when you're installing a jet pump, um, a properly functioning foot valve is going to be extremely critical. Uh, basically the function that a foot valve serves is this sits on the bottom of your suction line down in the water, well, lake, wherever you've got it installed. And this allows the water to enter the foot valve, but it has a, a stopper in here that prevents the water from flowing back out. And what that does is it keeps water inside the pump so that when the pump turns on, it's essentially able to get traction and move that water. Without a foot valve, the, uh, the volute here would be empty of water and the pumps aren't able to pump air. So it would just sit there and run and potentially damage your pump. So I always recommend a good quality foot valve for these situations because it's extremely critical to keeping your pump in good working order. So we'll jump right into plumbing this thing up and then uh, we'll get started with the electrical and see if we can figure out what's going on. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the inlet and what we have for in our testing station for the inlet is just a quick connect cam lock fitting with a, a PVC reinforced uh, hose material. And basically what we're gonna do is fill this completely with water and we've got a foot valve on the bottom of this. And then we're gonna go ahead and pour water into this portion of the pump and that's considered completely primed. Once this is full of water and this is full of water, we should be good to turn this thing on. Now, if you're fortunate enough to be in a situation where you have easy access to the water and everything, um, it's a good idea to fill up your suction line and just hold it there and watch it and see if the water level drops. Just a quick, easy way to make sure that your foot valve is working properly. All right, so we've got the suction line completely filled with water. We hooked it up. Uh, we just had to prop it up on this uh, bell reducer just to keep it from getting all wobbly on us. Um, and now what we're gonna do is, before we put this, uh, put this discharge in here, we'll go ahead and pour some water directly into the pump just to make sure that it's completely primed. All right, using our high-tech uh, pitcher or filling device, whatever you wanna call it, just fill this thing up with some water here. And then we'll just dump this water right on into the pump. And you wanna just fill this until it's completely full, just to make life easier on you. All right, well now that we've got the pump completely full of water, you can see it's very full, uh, we'll go ahead and install the discharge. And we have a quick disconnect on that too, just cause we're in, the, in our pump testing area here. Uh, you may need a wrench. Usually when you're testing pumps, uh, being extremely tight is not critical. Uh, whereas if it was a permanent installation, I may, I may take more time to tighten everything up a lot more snug and, and be completely assured that there's not any leaks. But in a testing situation, as long as you're not leaking like a sieve and losing your prime, you're pretty much good. We'll hook the discharge plumbing up here. All right, so inlet discharge installed, ready to test. Now all we've got left to do is hook up the electrical and then we'll turn this pump on and we'll see what it does. All right, so here we are on the back end of the jet pump. We're gonna go ahead and wire up the pressure switch. And um, while we're back here, I was gonna figure I'd show you guys how to, uh, how to check that we're set on the appropriate voltage. So if you look right here, uh, and most pumps that are gonna have something similar, factory wired for 230 volt connection. Um, so what that means is this pump, along with many jet pumps out there, are uh, able to run on 230 or 120 volt. And there's a switch just on the inside of this back plate here. 
that I'll show you if I can get this screw out. Come on. There we go. Um, so they've got a, a call out pointing to it, uh, 230 or 120. All right, so on this one, we have uh, 230 and 115 volt uh, marked right here. And this one actually works differently. Sometimes there's a little toggle switch or a little push button switch. This one, you actually pull it off and then plug it in. This, this white arrow here lines up with wherever you plug it in. So we're just gonna leave it at 230 because that's fine for our, for our testing and so forth. So I just shove this back in right where it goes. And that's 120. Hold on. There we go. So 230. Easy as that. So that's all there is to it. Um, so we'll go ahead and throw this back on real quick since we don't really need it off for anything. All right. Throw the back plate on here. Snug this up. And then we'll get to wiring the pressure switch. Now, we may end up actually having to take this back off now that I think about it in the event that we find something wrong and there's the capacitor in there that would uh, uh, that we can test to determine if there's something bad um, <clears throat> so when it comes to hooking up your wiring since we're going 230 volt it doesn't really matter what colors I hook to what sides so we basically just hook one to one side and one to the other side so that when these contacts open and close the power come goes in through the electrical and then around the contacts and then back down into the motor. And that's basically how they work. And we'll also hook up this ground lug on here. So we'll do that real quick. Now, um, last thing I'll mention is these are not the preferred type of connector. I kind of like the forked connectors for this, but since they're already on this cable and this is set up for our testing rig, we're just gonna go ahead and use these. <laughs> Well, they actually got black and white, that must be neither. Super easy. Throw these underneath the contacts. And one nice thing about using these connectors is they're never going to just like wiggle out. They're pretty situated in there once you install them. All right, and um, you, you may have noticed that when I installed these, I didn't come through this little conduit port. That's again, because we're testing, otherwise your lid won't go on. So uh, that's what this hole on the side of the pressure switch is for. But since we're testing and I actually want to see this operate, I just hook it up kind of the quick, easy or quick and dirty method. Um, so now we're ready to put power to this pump, run it and see what it does. Well, after running the pump, it definitely sounds like we, oh, it scared me. All right, so after running the pump, there's definitely an audible kind of grinding noise. It sounds like there's gravel or something, um, and it seems to be emanating from the motor side of things. Um, so this pump, it, it doesn't sound like it's anything that's really repairable because it's internal to the motor. Um, and yes, we probably could fix it, but it's a brand new pump. Uh, just got it from the factory not long ago. So what we're going to do in this instance is just go ahead and send this to the factory for warranty uh, repair. Um, now, had it been a broken impeller or uh, something along those lines, we might have dug further into it or a leaking seal, something easily replaceable. But when it involves spending a bunch of time tearing apart a motor that's under warranty, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So we'll go ahead and send this off and get it taken care of. 
Hey, so that's it. So thanks for joining us today on another great video. Don't forget you can find all these products on rcworst.com. Don't forget also to like and subscribe for more content. We'll see you next time.